Hello, I welcome you to today's webinar uh, from Toradex and the Qt company. Today we will show you how you can use the Qt software framework on Toradex modules and you will learn uh, what the Qt company and Toradex did to make uh, your life easier. Before we get started, a few organization things. So you see on the right side you should see a chat window. If you have any questions, uh, please free to type uh, them there. We will answer it uh, at the end. So at the end of the show, we will do a joint uh, question and answer session, and we will try to answer as many questions as possible. Also, if you have technical issue or you can't hear me, so just type that in this uh, box, and our technical uh, people will try to help you. So let's go back to the presentation. So the first 10 minutes I will talk about Toradex and about our hardware and then the, for the next 40 minutes Andy from the Qt company uh, will talk uh, about the software. He will give you uh, some samples and you will see uh, how you can use that uh, on our modules. And then at the end we have the question and answer session. So Toradex it's a global company. Um, if you guessing my accent, uh, it's a very strong Swiss accent and that's also where we headquartered and where the company started. But in the meantime, we are distributed over the whole uh, world. So you should find a Toradex office in your time zone or very close to your time zone. So if you have uh, any question, technical or about how to get our pro product, uh, feel free to contact any uh, of our offices. I normally work in the office uh, in Seattle uh, in the US. So what are computer modules? I expect many of you uh, joining this webinar, they are familiar with that concept, but I will really go uh, really short over it, what it is. So it's really what it says, it's, it's a computer on a module means everything you can find typically on a computer system, it's squeezed on a tiny module. That includes a flash and RAM. Flash would be um, similar to a hard drive on a, on a computer. Then you have the, the CPU, uh, you have display GPU, basically the graphic card in there, you have touch, you have audio, uh, you have the power management and uh, power management ca can be quite complicated by some of the SOCs uh, we use because you have many uh, variable uh, voltages and you have a lot of different voltages. It's not just uh, three volt inside the module. Then you have Ethernet for connectivity, you have SPI, I2C, CAN, serial ports, you have timer, PWM, GPIOs, stuff you would typically find more on a microcontroller than on a computer, but you have, have that on there too. So where these computer modes are used? So, Toradex computer modules are normally used in industrial or embedded grade application. Uh, that means compared to consumer, it's normally they have a little bit uh, higher expectation uh, on some of the requirements. Uh, for example, they have to run 24-7 for hours, day, months and, and many times a year. So we expect the module runs for years without the need uh, to reboot or without a fan failing or, or anything like that. The many time also temperature, it's, it's higher, it needs higher temperature or, or lower temperature. Uh, then also our modules, they are not used in very high volume products. So uh, everything over a hundred thousand pieces a year normally doesn't use our modules. So that they're normally used a couple thousand a year up to maximum about 10,000 10, a year. Here on this slide, you can see uh, different applications and that's all actual products uh, you can buy. Uh, my, maybe you recognize uh, some uh, or saw them somewhere. So we estimate that over 500 million people a day use a product where our module is integrated. But normally you can see them that there is no uh, Toradex brand uh, anywhere. It's deep inside the device. Then short a few words about our uh, product. So we have 
two lines of computer modules. Uh, one is called the uh, Colibri. That's the one uh, we are focusing today a little bit. And then we also have the Polis, which is a slightly bigger module. So the Colibri module. Uh, we have a whole range of it, and they're all pin compatible. They use a 200-pin SODIM form factor, and our low end is uh, with a Freescale Vibrate uh, VF50. So that's an ARM Cortex A5 with 400 megahertz, and then we also have uh, the VF61. What's interesting on that? It has the Cortex A5, but it also has an M4 microcontroller. Uh, that allows you to run a regular operating system like Linux, which is not real-time, uh, on one core and then use the other one, the M4, for a real-time operating system like ECOS or, or no operating system at all. And that's a very, that's kind of a new concept to have both uh, uh, CPUs on the same die. And if you are interested on that, we have uh, other webinar uh, in our archive, so go on our website and uh, you can listen to that webinar and learn more about that. And we also have Freescale IMX6, that's a single core up to quad core, Cortex A9. Then we have NVIDIA Tegros, it's a dual core or a quad core, Cortex A9 up to 1.3 gigahertz. That you get a feeling for the price, so for the low end uh, modules in some volumes to start at $24. If you go to the high end and buy them in lower volume, they're, they're over $100. That's also very interesting for a cute application, it's the GPU. So our low end, they actually they don't they have graphics, so you can connect a, a display, but they don't have a 3D acceleration or anything on there. So but Qt has special solution where you can use the same code on that uh, module or you can use it on one of our modules with more powerful graphics. So the Freescale IMX6, they, they have Vivante uh, GPUs and NVIDIA of course has their own uh, GPUs in NVIDIA uh, Tegra 2 and 3. Then why, why would you use a computer module? So one of the main reasons is a faster time to market. So if you, if you buy the module, uh, you're much faster to market than if you would do everything by yourself. Uh, it also lowers your development risk. And the module is tested. Uh, you can get it. You can test. Make sure everything runs before you, you begin uh, uh, your de uh, development. Uh, your and your scale you have scalability. So you don't need to decide really at the beginning what the SOC you use. Uh, you can still uh, scale up or down. Um, maybe the dual core is not enough. Uh, so you can go a quad core or maybe you need a a fast GPU and want to use NVIDIA, so that, that makes it easy because they're pin compatible and the uh, operating system APIs are the same, so you can easily switch. Then also people normally need to um, have a look on their price, also there the model can be very interesting. Uh, that's especially true for lower volume, so if you go over 100,000, this is normally not applying anymore, that's one of the main reasons that they're not used in that high volume, but if you have lower volume, uh, you're normally cheaper to buy a model than to buy all the components uh, uh, separate. But the reason is because we have a lot of customers which buy a low to medium volumes, but Torlex is really high volume, and we try to give the price advantage uh, to you. And also what a lot of people don't know is it really simplifies your carrier board where you plug in the module and the carrier board is where you have your IP, your knowledge, your special interfaces uh, for, for your device. So that can be much easier. So some of our complex modules have up to 12 layer but you may get away with, uh, with a full layer board. Then also if you are in the in production, it still has some advantages to use a module, simplified supply chain, you don't need to source 350 parts, you only need to supply one, and you also can upgrade over time. So if you suddenly want to add more features or reduce the price, you, you have the possibility to do that. Then why did we partner with Qt? So we really think the Qt framework boosts the advantage of a computer module. So we were talking about scalability, so you really get that with Qt. You, you can move from one module to another, you even can move away to a total different device. So you can go to a PC and you may can even uh, move your, your software 
to an Android or a QNX uh, operating system. So from Toradex, we support in-house Windows Embedded Compact and Linux, but if you use Qt, you even could uh, move away. Then time to market. Uh, Qt, you will see they have really nice uh, tools for the development, so you can uh, create beautiful, uh, good programs in a, in a really short time. And then you also have an upgrade phase, so Qt, they bring out uh, new software, new features all the time, so you're, you're not stuck with UI, which looks like 10 years ago, so you really can, can go go there. So what did we do uh, when we worked with Qt? So the main thing is you really wanted to provide you a really good out-of-the-box experience. So if you evaluate Qt or you evaluate the hardware and want to use Qt, uh, it, it should work seamlessly. So you, you will see that you, you can just get Qt and deploy that on our modules very easily. Then we also test the latest software. So uh, we give Qt our latest module and they test the, the latest software on our module. So you are always uh, up to date and you have a synchronized support. So you can go to Torodex and ask. They will try to answer as much as they can. If we can't help you, uh, we will uh, forward you to Qt and the opposite uh, way around. So that was it with, uh, with my part and I will uh, get the control to Andy and he will uh, tell you a little bit more uh, about the framework and how to use that on, on our modules. My name is Andy Nichols and I'm a software engineer at the, the Qt company. Uh, I've been here for, for quite some time. <laughs> uh, I think it's uh, almost seven, seven years now total uh, with the Qt team. Today I'll be talking about how you can speed up your uh, return on investment and time to market with uh, Qt for device creation. So give you a, a short introduction to the Qt company uh, because uh, you may not be familiar with uh, this, this name as it's actually a rather new name as of last year. Uh, the Qt company uh, was previously known as Digia uh, or we were a part of Digia now we're a wholly owned subsidiary of Digia. The Qt company is an international company responsible for all of the Qt operations globally uh, that were the primary developers of the Qt application uh, framework. Uh, we also have uh, design uh, services and consultancy services and uh, the development sites are, in, are primarily in Oslo, Norway, which is where I'm uh, coming to you from, uh, Berlin in Germany and Ulu in Finland. Uh, the, the company itself is based out of Finland. Uh, we have about uh, 200 employees and uh, roughly 20 years of Qt experience because uh, many of the employees in the Qt company actually go back to the original Trolltech days uh, when the company was based out of uh, Oslo, Norway. We have uh, roughly 5,000 customers uh, worldwide and, uh, you know, growing all the time. <laughs> okay, so our primary product uh, and, you know, the product our, our company is named after, you know, is uh, the Qt Application Development Framework, which is primarily a C++ uh, cross-platform uh, API. So I guess you, you can split this uh, down into a, a, a few different areas. So uh, Qt itself is a very broad, uh, broad framework. Uh, so at its heart, it's a cross-platform class library. So we have a uh, you know C++ classes for many many different abstractions uh, for each you know platform specific topic, uh, and then we have integrated development tools uh, to make actually using uh, those things across platforms are easier. Uh, and one one of those things is the uh, cross platform IDE uh, Qt Creator, which itself is a Qt application. Uh, so you can th this would be akin to using uh, say Visual Studio on Windows, but, you know, being able to do those same things uh, on uh, Mac OS X and uh, Linux, uh, the X11 uh, based Unix platforms. Uh, so Qt's usage is actually, we, we typically split it into two domains. Uh, one is just general application development, so writing uh, desktop applications or mobile applications, uh, and, like individual like applications to run on those on a, on a pre-existing platform, and then uh, the device creation. So this is actually uh, 
you know, uh, there's less of a clear distinction between the application itself and the hardware. So maybe you have a piece of hardware that, that the only user interface that you're given is the Qt application. So some of the, like the example down here you can see is a coffee machine. So the user interface for the coffee machine, uh, that's a Qt application. So that's, really, you know, it would be running Linux plus uh, the Qt application. So uh, what we're focused on today is uh, the device creation side because that, that's generally what you'll be doing uh, in the embedded space. Uh, with your embedded hardware. And the goal with uh, Qt for device creation is to, you know, make the most of the hardware. Uh, so Qt does this by, well, you know, using a, a very, you know, minimal stack, you know, so if you have, you know, a bare minimum Linux stack, uh, we can actually take advantage of, or we're, we're running natively on that hardware, so we can take advantage of that hardware directly. Uh, one of the ways we do this is uh, if your hardware actually has uh, a, a graphical processing unit, uh, we can offload much of the UI, uh, like the drawing and the you know rendering and the animations, uh, onto that GPU. So for embedded hardware, that would that would mean that uh, you have more more resources available on your uh, CPU to to handle you know other things than just the user interface. Uh, we also pride ourselves in, you know, the ability to create modern user interfaces uh, on embedded devices. So I guess, I guess in the embedded space, there's been a bit of a change in user expectations. So it used to be that it was it was okay just to have, you know, simple rectangular buttons that you could press to, you know, turn on a pump or, you know, some other, you know, HMI style interface. Uh, but now uh, we're seeing that, you know, users, you know, they, they have a have an embedded computer in their pocket, you know, their Android iOS phone, and it has, you know, smooth animations and swiping gestures and and very well thought out designs. Uh, and now that when when they're using other HMIs, they uh, they they expect that same experience uh, that they have on their phone. So so we're able to actually provide that uh, with the the Qt framework. Uh, and I guess it's also an advantage that uh, Qt, you know, if you're doing embedded embedded applications, you can also take that uh, embedded application and, you know, also make a mobile client uh, with the, the Qt mobile uh, ports. So if you, if you had an HMI that, that made sense to actually have a remote Android or iOS interface, you could, you could do that fairly easily. Uh, you also have a, we also help with the shorter time to market with Qt. Uh, because of this uh, ease of use, because we're abstracting away all the the dirty details of the you know the native platform, we can make it easier for you to program something that's that runs well on embedded Linux. And uh, we're a trusted technology partner, in that you know we we've been around for a while, we'll be around for a while yet. And the ecosystem, the Qt ecosystem, is huge. It's not just you know us uh, in the Qt ecosystem. Uh, Many many people are are using Qt and helping with Qt already. So, I guess, I, I guess uh, as far as like Qt interfaces itself, here, here's a here's a few examples of of Qt interfaces. Uh, what's really interesting is that uh, you see you see Qt Qt applications, Qt internet interfaces all the time. Uh, you just wouldn't know it because uh, you know we're, we don't. You know, we have cute labeling on everything. It's, it's all up to the individual manufacturers. It's also interesting that uh, if you if you walk around it, uh, I was at uh, Embedded World uh, a couple weeks ago, and if you walk around, you can see you know cute applications everywhere on embedded hardware. Uh, you can see a few examples here, uh, and uh, you know it's not just these these devices. Uh, it's it's it, it spreads the gamut of what will we consider embedded hardware? So, what's great about Qt is that it is a cross-platform, uh, you know, development framework. Uh, if you write your software uh, one time uh, with, you know, with Qt, you're then able to take that software and rebuild it uh, natively for, you know, each of the platforms, whether that be, you know, embedded, embedded Linux. Uh, uh, QNX or on desktop, maybe you also have a Windows client, a Linux client, 
Mac client, and then the mobile clients. And in all these cases, uh, Qt takes care of the differences in in the platforms. So you know, if you if you're just drawing drawing a UI, we take care of you know getting a window surface, what that actually means on each platform, and you know drawing that for you and and really I guess the generally you know 90% of your code is going to be shared uh, between the platforms so uh, in many cases you know you have to write a, a little bit of, uh, of, of platform specific code to do things that only make sense on one particular platform but generally 90% of your code will be shared between each of your ports. I've just kind of talked about the cross-platform nature of Qt. Uh, uh, it's uh, also a possibility. Uh, I mean, the, the actual C++ libraries in themselves are also very broad. Just to, to explain a few of the, the actual APIs that you can expect to have varies from, so, so the very low-level uh, things that you might need, like container classes. Uh, and in, some, in some platforms, you may not have a, an, a standard template library you can trust. Uh, so we, we provide a common set of uh, containers that you can use, and they're compatible with the standard template library and the standard template library algorithms. Uh, we have uh, abstractions for networking uh, APIs like uh, sockets. So if you need a TCP socket, uh, you don't have to worry about the differences between using a T TCP socket on Unix versus Windows or uh, you know, just the differences there. Like if you use the QTCP socket, uh, it will behave the same on every platform. Uh, we also have uh, you know higher level parameters. Uh, so if you if you want to do uh, multimedia uh, in your application, so you want to play sounds when someone hits a button, like a like a bell sound, or if you want to play you know streaming audio from a web server, or even you know video, play videos to in the background, uh, you can do that. Uh, fairly easily. And we also scale up to the uh, you know, very high level component of you, know, you need a web browser on your embedded device. Uh, you want to show you know, modern HTML5 web pages. Uh, you can actually, we provide a, uh, a web, uh, cute web, what we call Cute Web Engine to actually uh, display web content. Uh, and we have many add-ons uh, you know, for uh, the various things that you'd want to do. Uh, for uh, your platform. So specifically uh, with device creation, uh, we have add-ons like a, a virtual keyboard. Uh, I guess using that as an example, uh, a virtual keyboard is something that you would need on uh, an embedded hardware with uh, no touch screen. So if you're, if you're actually doing device creation, you, you typically don't have a, a pre-existing window manager like you would on, say, iOS, where there's a built-in keyboard. Uh, there, you, you're actually responsible for providing a solution to actually do text input if you need need that, uh, and you don't have a hardware keyboard. And uh, so we provide like a pre-built uh, virtual keyboard solution that you know supports multiple uh, multiple languages and uh, uh, for different input methods. So, for example, uh, Asian input methods like uh, you know typing with a pinion. We also have a uh, charting. Uh, APIs both 2D and 3D, and uh, ju just many other enablers uh, for doing, uh, uh, you know, these uh, device creation uh, th th things that, that solve problems uh, that you have with device creation. Uh, we also have a large set of embedded tooling, and I'll be showing that uh, live uh, shortly. Uh, but this this includes uh, the Cute Creator. Uh, IDE, the Integrated Development Environment. Uh, we have a visual UI designer, so you can drag and drop components uh, into your user interface uh, that you want to display on your device. Uh, we have a we have an emulator to actually, you know, if you don't have hardware at, at, at any particular time, you can simulate the actual hardware you are running on. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll I'll talk a bit about more of this later when we're uh, we're actually uh, demonstrating this. So, specifically, uh, Qt, Qt's offering for uh, device creation. Uh, we're really, uh, we know that uh, device create, the software side of device creation can be, you know, quite challenging uh, to get started with. So, one of the things we've really focused on is uh, 
you know, quick, quickly getting started uh, with a piece of hardware. And so we do this uh, with uh, what we call uh, reference, uh, reference hardware, uh, reference platforms. Uh, we have, and that, that's where uh, our partnership with uh, Tordex comes in. So Tordex is uh, one of our reference hardware providers. So for many of the Tordex modules, uh, you can just buy the module, uh, uh, have your hardware. Uh, it, 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 you know, it'll, it'll boot up to a basic platform uh, when you get it. But what you can actually do is if you want to test out Qt development on that uh, module, uh, all you have to do is download our uh, Qt SDK uh, from the Qt.io website. And when you're actually installing this, you can select, uh, you know, uh, these various Tordex board, uh, and we have pre-built images uh, that you can you know, download. And, and basically, the way it works is you, you know, flash an SD card, uh, the copy of uh, our reference image, which is just a basic embedded Linux stack with Qt pre-installed, and you can then immediately just, you know, start up Qt Creator, hook it, hook up your uh, your uh, Tordex device uh, via USB on the USB on the go port, and then you can you know deploy directly, build for and deploy directly to that device uh, right then. Uh, no no setup, uh, just just as a installation and uh, hook it up to USB, and I'll, I'll show you that uh, shortly. Um, yeah, so so we we do provide that and. That, that also uh, itself uses uh, the Yocto project, so uh, you're able to, you know, then customize this image if you want to, uh, the, the reference image, or you can, you know, create your own uh, uh, building cute yourself uh, in your own in your own stack. Okay, so uh, and around this, uh, we, we have also other services that enable device creation. So we have some, you know, additional enablers like uh, Qt Cloud services. So if you if you don't already have a cloud solution uh, to to, you know, store data, retrieve data, I can, we have that, and we have additional professional services and support. Uh, the Qt company provides uh, support and training for actually using uh, Qt, and uh, specifically Qt in the device creation space. So, actually developing uh, Qt apps uh, for uh, embedded, we have uh, a couple of main uh, I guess paradigms, uh, like routes that you can choose to actually uh, do a Qt application development. Uh, the one I'm actually going to be pushing uh, today, or showing today, is the Qt Quick route, which is the preferred route uh, for uh, like doing devices. Uh, this is a uh, Basically, you write a C++ uh, backend, so like integrating with uh, your the things you actually want to display in your UI. Uh, you you write those uh, bridges in C++, and then we have a declarative uh, a declarative uh, UI design language uh, called uh, QML that you declaratively state uh, what what your UI should look like and behave like. So you define like oh, there's a button here, and if you press it, it animates and moves off screens. Like all that's uh, that's written not in C++ but in this QML, which is uh, I'll, I'll I'll demonstrate that shortly as well. We also offer uh, what we call Qt widgets, which is a C++ only API. Uh, this is uh, what you would use, you know, to create traditional desktop uh, apps. Uh, you know, the typical Windows app these days. Uh, if you want that style app on your embedded device, uh, where you just oh want a push button that looks like a button here. <laughs> Uh, that, that's how you do that. We also have a, a separate drag and drop editor uh, for this. And then, if you do have uh, this, uh, want to do a web hybrid. So if you have and already have an HTML5 uh, uh, user interface that you run on one platform and you want to run it on embedded, we provide a path for that too. So basically, you create a a web a web engine uh, view in in on your device and then load up your content. So that's and there's some ways to like bridge additional bridging efforts uh, uh, between the native interfaces and what's actually displayed on the web page. So, so, so we do have a these are the, these are the three big uh, ways to develop Qt apps. But again, we'll be focused on the Qt Quick way uh, today. Uh, and going into detail about the actual workflow uh, for Qt Quick, this is uh, 
this is a, a more uh, the more modern workflow that, that you typically have uh, in in mobile mobile and desktop apps these days so you actually would have your designer uh, mock up uh, what the interface uh, should look like and then they can put that you know they would normally do that in illustrator or or, or some other tool they can then put that into uh, the QML designer and then they can you know it's a you know drag and drop style editor more more designer friendly and then actually you know implement what the look and feel for the app will be uh, and that way and yeah basically so so put the buttons you know with the pix maps uh, into the scene and then define how they're animated when things happen and then the actual developers will hook into that uh, user interface uh, with C++ and they'll be responsible for integrating with the C++ libraries we provide to you know do the meat of the you know business logic or hook into any pre-existing business log logic you want to connect to your user interface okay uh, and uh, speaking of the QML uh, designer I'll, I'll show it live in a little bit but this is what it looks like uh, just a, a simple thing it's part of uh, it built into the Q creator IDE and that, that's what's shown here I'll show you how to uh, prototype or how, how quickly you can get started prototyping your your cute application on Tordex hardware uh, specifically the Vibrid hardware uh, in this case the Freescale Vibrid uh, uh, I think this is the, the VF61 so this is the one with the uh, the, the Cortex A5 and the M4 coprocessor uh, Qt itself uh, doesn't run on the M4 uh, core that would you know you you'd have an RTOS there but we run on the A5 an interesting thing about uh, the uh, Vibrid platform is that there is no uh, graphical processing unit or at least a, a, there's no there is a GPU but it's not a 3D GPU so we can't take advantage of OpenGL to you know offload the user interface uh, to that GPU and, and and previously that was a problem with uh, Qt in general is that uh, if you're using Qt Quick you could not render anything if you were if, you, if your hardware didn't have OpenGL but now we actually have a a, a, a 2D uh, solution that actually renders the content of the Qt Quick interface uh, in software of course this takes more CPU power and you're not going to be able to do as many uh, you know fancy animations but uh, it is still very usable for you know if, if you have uh, you're you know spending uh, less less money on the hardware uh, it's because you know you you have a maybe you have a less less ambitious goals for your user interface or less ambitious needs so I think uh, uh, there's a comparison here uh, between uh, a vehicle IVI system uh, where you know it's a multimedia system uh, for, for, for a car versus uh, the user interface for a washing machine you don't need fancy particle effects and animations on your washing machine you just need to you know tell it to you know wash your clothes <laughs> so uh, at least you have the, the option uh, now so we, we can span the range of uh, uh, these Tordex is available uh, compute modules uh, with Qt uh, and the Qt Quick technology. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you uh, how this looks like uh, in practice. So I'm going to switch over to the Qt Creator IDE here. Uh, this uh, this is what you, you'll actually get when you install the uh, Qt SDK from Qt.io. And uh, I'm going to uh, the idea is to run on uh, our, our uh, Vibrid device. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my webcam now so that you can actually see the, the embedded device. Yep, so if, if you look at my webcam, you should be able to see uh, a device I have running here on my desk. Uh, this is the, uh, the VF61 uh, uh, Vibrid module from Tordex. It's actually running on a 7-inch touchscreen. And uh, yeah, so what, what I'm going to do is uh, just yeah, I can just show you this real quick. So this is uh, this is a, a cute quick application running on the device, and 
this is this is actually the reference image. So when you buy uh, or when when you in, install the the the, the cute pre-built image for uh, the Vibrid or the VF61 uh, to the SD card and put it in your uh, put it in your device, it boots up to this uh, reference image that that shows uh, the kind of performance you can expect and the kind of features available for a given piece of hardware. Uh, so uh, just to demonstrate uh, a few things, uh, so uh, you can see here we have a uh, you know a, the virtual keyboard that I mentioned earlier and. You can, uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty usable there. I mean, it, it, this device uh, supports multi-touch, and and so so do we. And uh, just one more example, uh, you know, we have a, a simple dashboard example here. And I'm not not sure how good the the webcam broadcasts the actual performance of this, but uh, we do get a, a very fluid animation here, at least at least locally. Uh, where you can see see the the dial moving and the, the numbers changing. All of this is uh, you know done with uh, Cute Quick. Okay, so if we if we actually uh, this is uh, this is what we'll do. So uh, I'm going to create a uh, from scratch uh, new application to run on this device. So if I'm in Cute Creator, all I need to do is you know, say new project. Uh, it gives me a selection of uh, templates to choose from. Uh, since we're uh, talking about uh, Cute Quick, uh, I'm going to select that. I'm going to just call it a simple demo. Uh, we're given a, a select of components to choose from. Uh, I'm going to just select uh, Cute Quick controls. And uh, I'm given a selection of kits here. Uh, in Cute Creator, uh, kits are the uh, the target uh, platform that we want to deploy to, uh, and, and since we have some pre-installed uh, kits, uh, I'm just going to deselect the desktop platform and select the embedded Linux Calabri uh, VF, which is the 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 Vibrid compute module here, and then we'll just finish that off. And let me zoom in a little bit. So this is the uh, QML language that I was a uh, referring to earlier. It's a you know declarative language to define what the UI actually looks like. And uh, it, the syntax may seem familiar if you're familiar with uh, JavaScript object notation, and that's because it is actually based off of that or a subset of the syntax. So you know define an object and then each of the properties gets defined. So in this case this application uh, just uh, displays a, a minimal interface. Uh, with a with the dialog button. So if you if you touch a touch a button, then it will uh, pop up a, a dialog box. So the only thing I have to do to uh, run this application on my device is to now uh, hit 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 really hit hit the run button. Uh, uh, if you look if you look here, uh, uh, there's a little little green light here, and that 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 means that uh, I'm actually connected to that device. And, and the only way I'm connected to that device is uh, via the USB cable. So I've hooked in the uh, uh, just a regular micro USB cable to the USB on the go port and hooked it up. And now you know if I if I hit run here, it should cross compile my Qt application uh, uh, for for uh, Cortex A5, and then deploy that to the device and run it. So if I hit run here, you can look at the webcam. And you should see our application pop up on the device. Yeah, and there it is. So uh, it it's actually not the full size of the screen right now, so that's why you can see part of it places. But so well, it's it's kind of a running a running. It's a weird example to run uh, without actually setting the window size. But I can load up a, a separate example that I. Uh, wrote wrote earlier that that maybe better demonstrates this. So, so this is also a cute quick uh, application. Uh, so it, this is just a simple HMI to uh, procedurally generate terrain. And again, uh, I'm just going to cross compile this and deploy this to the device. And I do this by you know selecting selecting the correct kit. Uh, in this case, the Calabri VF kit, and then hitting run. So again, I look at the webcam. And uh, there is our user interface running on the device. So you can see here if I'm pressing the buttons, it's then moving the 
the terrain around and re dynamically redrawing it. I can uh, change values about the actual terrain. So if we, we can zoom in and out. And uh, all of this is done in uh, Qt Quick. Um, the, if you look back at the Qt Creator, uh, this application is actually, uh, oh, what is, this might be the wrong file. So this application is a, oh, apparently I've uh, messed up my uh, application. So let's uh, reset that one. Uh, okay, so let's, let's hopefully it will work now. Uh, okay, so uh, of course the demo effect is uh, in full force today because uh, I'm not actually able to show you this application in the QML designer. Uh, I actually developed this application in the QML designer by you know dragging and dropping uh, each of the individual uh, elements. Uh, here you can actually, uh, you know, drag if you want to push button somewhere, you just drag the button into the interface. But uh, it seems that it has uh, has uh, decided it doesn't like this file anymore. I've been monkeying around with it. Uh, so just to just show you a bit of the uh, integration between the, you know, the C++ side and the QML side. So, so while I'm declaratively design my interface uh, with QML here. Uh, I actually am loading uh, many of these items are actually C++ components. So this uh, terrain viewer item, that is a C++ object that actually gets loaded uh, by the interface. And you can actually see that item in, as a C++ uh, implementation. So here, uh, you can see that I've uh, subclassed this uh, QQuick item, which is a you know visual item, a visual C++ item that I want to display in QML, and then I've defined uh, properties, uh, uh, and these will be like what what properties can actually be changed or viewed from the the QML side, so the QQuick side. So uh, if you can see from the user interface itself, uh, if I wanted to change the water level uh, by a slider. There's a water level property uh, that's exposed to the C++ side that you know really is just you know a setter for set water level and a getter for you know water level. And then when I I can then bind the property of the C++ object to a QML item in this case the slider. So if we look in the uh, slider side, we can see there is a connection between the water level property of the terrain viewer item. Uh, to the uh, the actual slider in the form. So as I change the value of the slider object all, all in the interface, it then updates the property. So uh, it's very easy to uh, run uh, run new essentially build uh, user interfaces for embedded devices, uh, but it's also possible to you know do other you know, development techniques. So, for example, if I needed to debug my application, so for example, the terrain generator itself, uh, I'm actually able to do remote debugging uh, on the hardware. So, from the Qt Creator IDE, all I need to do is set a breakpoint, and then uh, I can then run, uh, you know, with debugging enabled, and then I'll then use GDB to connect to the GDB server on the device, and then I can do C++ debugging remotely. So, so what it's going to do now is, is actually, you know, again, cross-compile the application, deploy it to the device, and then it's going to, you know, load up the debug symbols uh, so that I can, you know, visually use the debugger. So it just takes a few seconds to uh, load up all of the, uh, the, the shared, shared libraries. Okay. Okay. So. <laughs> oh, uh, yes. <laughs> I did. I built my application in de in release mode, which is not going to, <laughs> not going to let the debugger work. So I do need to fix that. Okay. So let's let's try that again with debug mode enabled. <laughs> Okay, and you can see here that there is a, 
you know, one breakpoint set. Uh, we haven't uh, haven't actually hit that breakpoint yet. It's again having to load all of the SOs in, in on the, the remote device. Yes, and so now uh, we've actually hit uh, the breakpoint that we set in the Qt Creator IDE. You can see here we've stopped on this Q image here. Uh, and you, and you have all of the things that you normally have on the desktop when you're uh, debugging. So here we have our locals field where we can, you know, drill down and see the properties of all of the local variables and what their current values are. Uh, we have a stack here so we can actually see uh, where our, our function is being called from. And then we actually have, you know, the real, you know, step, uh, step into, step over. And like as we're, as we're stepping, we're actually seeing the live uh, update of what's going on. Okay, so that is, uh, I guess, the, the live demonstration uh, as far as what actually is possible with, uh, uh, you know, Qt Creator and Qt, uh, just rough overview. Um, uh, as far as our licensing options goes, we, we have a, our, our licensing is separated into, again, the application development uh, offering and the device creation offering. Uh, you can actually see all of our licensing off offerings at uh, Qt.io. Uh, they uh, ban from the op just using the open source modules uh, for for doing doing these things uh, under the terms of the open source. And we also have commercial commercial licensing uh, available uh, with a uh, few licensing restrictions. Uh, and this is uh, uh, you know the primary primarily for a device creation, uh, this would be uh, relevant. So definitely check out the uh, cute.io uh, website for more details about uh, what our licensing offering actually is and how you can actually try this stuff yourself uh, with your uh, Torx hardware. Okay, and uh, that is it from me. Uh, I think uh, now it's uh, be time for some uh, questions and answers, if there are some. Okay, uh, so uh, I have a question here about uh, uh, the, uh, the question is, does Qt Enterprise version use the same libraries as the one cross-compiled uh, from source code? Uh, so the, the Qt Enterprise version it, it also is compiled from source code, uh, but uh, the, the, the Qt Enterprise version also, all, only, only the enterprise version offers some additional modules like the virtual keyboard, the charting, the charting APIs, both the 2D and the 3D data visualization APIs, and uh, yeah. So, so at least uh, what's thought of as the you know open source version, there are additional modules uh, available under the enterprise licensing terms. Okay. Uh, so I have, I have another question about uh, what do you need specifically to cross-compile Qt libraries for a specific device? Uh, so that's a, that's a long, long question. Uh, so uh, generally when you're uh, cross-compiling for, you know, any, any device, uh, you, need, you, need, you need a couple of things. So first you need a tool chain that actually can, uh, you know, make hardware or build software for that device. Uh, you know, in this case, you know, it's a, 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 a GCC tool chain capable of building uh, our, our ARM Cortex-A5 code uh, for this device. Uh, you need a sysroot that actually represents the image on your system, and you need that system image. So you already have to have an OS running on the system, and then a sysroot, uh, which is a, you know, part of your tool chain that includes the development headers and the SO files to actually link against, to build hardware for that system. Uh, you also need to define, uh, yeah, you just basically define what, what you're building for uh, in the make spec. Uh, so like the actual details of, you know, use these C flags uh, and use this as a root. So uh, we have some uh, detailed documentation uh, on the Qt.io or docs.qt.io website uh, as far as like the details of cross compilation. But as, as far as like getting started, uh, we, with the images that I talked about today, like we do a lot of that for you, uh, uh, and you can customize that from there. Uh, okay, I have another question about uh, 
playing uh, video. Uh, so uh, to play video, do we need a GPU? Uh, in the case of the the Vibrid, like you can play video if it's like a 480 video, like uh, not very high resolution because there is no uh, video acceleration hardware there. Uh, the problem is, is that uh, all of this video is software decoded, so it actually takes quite a bit of uh, CPU resources to render video to the screen, and, and that that's true for any any of these uh, devices that don't have GPU. You really want to be able to decode the video on the GPU uh, for that to make sense. Uh, devices like the or SOCs like the IMX6 have dedicated hardware for this, and with Qt, uh, we take advantage of that. So uh, I would say that yes, you. You can play video without a GPU, but you, you, you should probably try it and, and uh, you know, maybe something that makes sense for your device, a very low resolution video. Uh, another question, uh, in the Hello World example, uh, the Qt libraries are already installed on the device. Uh, that is uh, correct. Uh, so uh, in this case, uh, for this device, uh, the device image that we actually flashed to the SD card it's just a minimal embedded Linux uh, distribution we built with uh, Yocto, and that includes the Qt libraries uh, there already. So the Qt uh, shared object files are are there, uh, and so we build against them on the desktop. Just deploy the binary, and then uh, that's what actually runs. Let's see some other questions. Uh, Okay, is the stack, uh, the Qt stack, av only available on the commercial license, or can I build it with a uh, Qt community? So uh, again, uh, Qt itself is uh, a dual licensed uh, framework, so it's both available under open source and uh, commercial licensing terms. Uh, and yes, uh, you can build uh, Qt under the open source uh, uh, terms. Uh, not all of the modules are present. Uh, and uh, they are under different licensing terms, so some of them are under, uh, as far as open source goes, uh, LGPL v2, and some are under LGPL v3, and uh, that that's uh, I guess uh, that that's the way the way it is. Uh, but yes, you can actually build those uh, uh, for uh, embedded devices as well. Uh, okay, what kind of uh, support does Qt provide for porting to custom hardware? So uh, Qt's fairly flexible about uh, what hardware you're running on. Uh, it's it's been a lot easier these days because uh, uh, many different hardware vendors, you know, use the same uh, SOCs, and you know we just have to define a few in Qt, and that's the level that we actually uh, support it at. So generally, you do this by creating custom MK specs, uh, which are just the definitions of what what to build for a given platform. So if you have a new exotic SOC that we haven't seen yet, uh, it would, it's just a matter of uh, you know creating a custom custom make spec for that for building for that particular piece of hardware. Uh, how can I enable? Uh, how can I be sure that uh, OpenGL under QML Qt Quick Project? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, uh, the, the actual question there, but uh, at least with OpenGL, if your if your hardware actually supports OpenGL, uh, then uh, Qt Quick will automatically use uh, uh, OpenGL. Like that's that's the default behavior. So the the default renderer for Qt Quick uh, renders uh, OpenGL commands. Like it, it's uh, it's an OpenGL renderer. Like in the same way that a, a game engine uh, would render its content with uh, OpenGL, just basically taking the scene tree and then finding the most efficient way to render that. In uh, in the case that you don't have OpenGL, uh, you have to manually uh, enable the 2D renderer, and that's that's done with an environment variable. So you just basically set this one environment variable that's documented in the 2D renderer uh, documentation, and then instead of rendering, uh, you know, with an OpenGL renderer, we will manually, uh, you know, render the scene or what what can be rendered in the scene with uh, with uh, uh, raster paint engine commands. Okay, let's see. More questions. Let's see. Uh, there's a question about uh, educational licenses. Uh, there aren't currently any uh, like special uh, educational licenses for the additional 
what's, what's the, the commercial modules, uh, but Qt itself is also a open source, uh, an open source development framework. So uh, I think that would be what's appropriate in the uh, education space is to use the open or use Qt under the open source licensing terms. Yeah, let's see. Okay, there's a question about uh, Qt5. Uh, does Qt5 run on integrity? Uh, Qt5 doesn't currently run on integrity. I think the only uh, the uh, Qt4.8 still is the we only have support for Qt4.8 on integrity. So you're not actually able to use uh, Qt Quick 2 like I'm showing here today if you're running integrity. Okay, uh, so there's a question about what is the effect of animation on the CPU when use or when using Qt. Uh, so in the 2D renderer case, uh, it, animations are very expensive because uh, when you're actually rendering a scene uh, with the 2D renderer, uh, every frame that you paint something, uh, everything needs to be redrawn, and that's that's very expensive. So if you're doing a 2D interface, you really don't want to uh, have lots of animations. Uh, in the case that you're using the OpenGL renderer, which is the default renderer on hardware that has OpenGL, then uh, animations are much cheaper uh, because uh, generally the only things, uh, many of the animations themselves can actually be also calculated on the GPU side, but in the cases that you know, you're doing special animations, like the CPU impact is fairly minimal because then you're only, the only thing you're really calculating is the basically the linear curve itself, so, you know, just updating a single floating point value. Uh, okay, uh, what backend does Qt use for playing videos, and are these included in the example file system image? So, uh, Qt uses, uh, on embedded Linux, it's using GStreamer. So, uh, you have to have a GStreamer, uh, we, we, in, in Qt 5.4, which is the current version, we only support GStreamer 0.0. 10, and in the upcoming release, uh, we'll support uh, both uh, GStreamer 1, oh, 1, 1 plus and uh, GStreamer 0 0.10. So uh, you do have to have that as part of your file system image to support it, and you also have to have the hardware plugins uh, if you want hardware acceleration support, which is something that Freescale uh, can provide as part of their BSP if you're using uh, Freescale hardware. The same goes for other vendors. Uh, how to develop a single application for different resolutions. Uh, so uh, everything is uh, scalable to a certain extent, so you can either scale the entire UI by a scale factor, or you just have a, a UI designed that uh, you know resizes uh, based on uh, the layout. So uh, if, for example, with the, the demo application that I showed, like all of those things are are laid out with anchors, so basically certain controls are anchored to certain places. Uh, they have, uh, you know, and they're laid out in like a column layout. And as the UI is actually resized, you know, in the same way that you re you resize a window in the desktop, uh, the application uh, actually just stretches itself out uh, based on those rules. And yeah, so, so that's how it works. Uh, it would be the same, you know. So if I run it on a uh, on the same piece of hardware with a different size screen it would just be you know, bigger stretched out. Certain elements would be bigger than others. Let's see what else we got question-wise. Oh, okay, so are there image processing libraries? Is there support for OpenCV? So uh, Qt itself uh, isn't uh, responsible for the actual uh, processing, but you can use uh, Qt uh, alongside uh, OpenCV. So basically, your Qt application displays what the CV application is processing. So we can, uh, with Qt, you can read from the webcam or a camera that you have, and then take that content and filter it with OpenCV, and then render uh, render the you know any additional overlays or what you have with Qt uh, based on that content. So so Qt. Itself, while it doesn't provide any direct OpenCV integration, it works well with OpenCV. 
uh, was this uh, example created with boot to cute uh, Yes. So uh, boot to cute is what we call our reference stack. So yes, that is uh, what I was showing today. Okay, uh, is Qt Whalen most suitable and lightweight window manager for Qt embedded applications? Uh, I didn't really uh, speak so much about uh, Whalen today, but uh, if you're doing uh, multiple, uh, if you need to show multiple windows, or multiple application windows are different from different processes at the same time, uh, then a Whalen compositor is likely the most uh, the most viable option on Im embedded Linux. Uh, the problem there is, of course. Uh, hardware, uh, usually at the hardware level, so the BSPs uh, for a given piece of hardware not providing sufficient enablers for uh, doing efficient Whalen compositing. So, uh, so for example, you know, multi applications that use OpenGL to render their content, having two of those displayed on the screen at time requires some enablers from the, uh, from the actual vendors. Uh, this is getting better, uh, but still, like now, the these drivers are still like uh, I would say testing quality, maybe not something you could, you could ship reliably. Uh, generally, what we're doing uh, for for this is uh, you know full screen full yeah a window equals a full screen application. So, and that that's what I'm showing, and that's also the most efficient way uh, to do it with the current uh, GPU drivers. Uh, okay, uh, that is uh, that's all the the questions I have. Uh, my list for now. Uh, uh, I think also we may be uh, out of time. Uh, so, okay. Uh, thank you for uh, for listening in. I uh, hope that you uh, enjoy what you saw, and definitely check out uh, cute.io for more information on our side. So we are uh, back. Um, actually, we, if you have time, I, I also have a lot of questions here uh, for Toradex related uh, stuff, and I will try to go uh, through that. So there were several questions about a uh, combination uh, of Toradex module with Qt. Uh, for example, if we have that for the IMX6, uh, yes, we do. So you can do the same you saw. You can do that with the Apalis, uh, IMX6, uh, quad core, and dual core. And we will also soon have it online for the Colibri uh, IMX6. And then there are also ways uh, to do it with our NVIDIA Tegra. However, that's currently not uh, combined with the boot to Qt. But you can also uh, use Qt, of course, uh, on that module. Then there are several questions about uh, frame rates and performance. It uh, it really varies. It's really hard to make a general um, statement about performance. Uh, just to give you an idea, the NVIDIA Tegra 3 is able to drive two full HD screens at the same time with different content. So if you do have two full HD screen uh, with crazy uh, 3D animations uh, on both with Qt, uh, your frame rate is probably not 60 frames per second anymore, but if you have lower uh, resolution screens or uh, just one screen, uh, for example, one guy asked for 1280 times 480, I mean, that's really no problem, especially for the modules with the GPU. Uh, for the Vibrid, uh, there you are uh, a little limited and you can expect a lower frame rate, especially if you use uh, animation. Uh, then somebody asked uh, he would like to do a dashboard if the, for a car, if the Toradex uh, IMX6, uh, it's, it's a good uh, solution. Um, if you work for a BMW uh, or Volkswagen, uh, you probably have uh, volumes into millions, so, but you still can use our uh, module for test. Uh, if you work for a luxury car uh, manufacturer, uh, we are definitely a good solution, and there are some luxury cars driving around uh, with our uh, modules in it. Also, a lot of uh, prototype and, and low-volume cars. Um, are there, there was a question before about uh, open uh, CV. 
Uh, I just uh, would like to let you know that we work uh, with NVIDIA and you probably uh, saw the announcement uh, of the new X1. Uh, so if you are interested in uh, image processing, uh, sign up for our newsletter and you can expect the uh, news there uh, very soon. Um, and here also a question how to use that with the NVIDIA Tegra and the Qt. That's possible. Uh, we have a developer website, uh, developer.toradex.com, and you find real instruction on how to get started uh, with basically all combinations. Um, uh, what's the advantage of using Toradex models? Of course, I could give you a, a, a big marketing uh, speech here. I mean, one of the main advantages between our models and other is that we provide it with a Windows Embedded Compact and Linux out of the box. And then that's our production quality BSP. So it's not just for evaluation. The idea is really that you can take this BSP and then go into volume uh, production. Uh, other advantages, I think, is the support and the ecosystem with Qt and with other partners. Uh, uh, what was the target device? Yeah, it was a Colibri VF50 uh, at that time, or VF61. Uh, about the file system, uh, so our products are really designed for um, embedded uh, grades. So one uh, use case is that you probably can lose power at any time. And Toradex, our file system, if you choose the right one, on Linux you can choose different ones. If you use the right one, you can actually do that and you will not corrupt the file system. If your database or whatever uh, you use or your file is still usable for your application, depends on your application, but it will be still uh, uh, bootable and you will not corrupt the, the, the system. Uh, what are the difference between the Linux distribution from Toradex and from boot to Qt? So if you use our model, you can actually choose two uh, different uh, distribution. And the Toradex distribution, it's more like a desktop uh, uh, experience. Uh, so you have a, a, LX, a, a desktop. And you you feel like you're you're on a Ubuntu or a, a Windows PC, and if you install Qt, uh, boot to Qt, they removed all that overhead, and you just directly boot into the the boot to Qt application. So it, it's more typical uh, what what you have uh, in an embedded device. So optimized for one single application. But you saw what Andy showed the the starter so you can test uh, different uh, demos there. There are questions about how to connect it. So I really recommend uh, the Toradex developer uh, website. In case you can't find a uh, question, feel free uh, to uh, use our email support. This is colibri at toradex.com and some of our engineers uh, will help you uh, with that. Or uh, you can also call our, our, one of our offices if you like. Then there was a question about how to interface with hardware. Uh, the nice thing on Qt is it's native uh, C++. So you, uh, we recommend if, if there is hardware, if there is a driver available, the best is you use that driver uh, for interfaces which don't have driver. For example, on Windows uh, uh, CE, you don't have drivers for everything. There, Toradex provides a software library, so you still can move uh, your, your software. Uh, other question is if you compile something for uh, the VF50, so you have the binaries with Qt, can you run that on an IMX6? Uh, yes, you can. That's uh, all ARM v7, and you, you can move that. And the APIs are also the same, except, of course, you use uh, a feature which is only available in the VF50. Uh, it will not run on the VF, uh, on IMX6 or on NVIDIA Tegra, but uh, the code itself is it's fully compatible. Um, does we provide a pre-built SDK and toolchain for development? Uh, yeah, that's exactly what uh, Andy provided uh, for Linux. Uh, for Windows CE, we have something similar. So you can also get a, a pre-built SDK, so you don't need to uh, build the, the Qt stack by yourself. 
but of course you're open uh, to do that if you like. Um, what's the typical uh, boot time uh, for Qt uh, demo app? Um, honestly, I'm not exactly sure. I think it's a few seconds, but it's also not uh, very optimized, so you can really optimize uh, your boot time and uh, Toradex uh, can help you. Uh, you may saw our fast boot, uh, but this is a, with a little bit different system than today. The fast boot, which we can boot into a full application in less than a half a second, was with uh, NVIDIA Tegra 2. It's a dual core Cortex A9, and the application is much smaller. So Qt has uh, the runtime. Uh, this needs to be available, uh, but also there it's way to make your uh, runtime smaller, and, and we are happy. Uh, to help you here, and then of course other uh, ways are suspend, and then there is also something like snapshot boot is something similar to hibernation. Um, so you can definitely, and also feel free uh, to test it. So if you really have a, a application and an embedded application, we have a free sample uh, program. So you can go on our website, uh, close to where you would order. You can find a sample request. You can fill that out. And you may even get a free hardware. And then from the Qt company, you also get a free evaluation version uh, to test Qt. And then there is always the open uh, source option, too. Uh, what was the latest version? Uh, it's 5.4, so we really try to uh, keep up uh, with Qt. Uh, that's the nice thing that we are the reference platform, so the latest versions are normally tested on our hardware. Um, okay, let me see. I think that's it, and we are already quite over our time. So if you have more questions, feel free to uh, contact our support. Uh, if it's Toradex related, uh, we will answer it. Otherwise, we will uh, guide you to, to the right uh, people at Qt, or you can also uh, directly uh, contact Qt. And they also have uh, forums and uh, the website with a lot of information. So thanks a lot. Uh, we will shortly make the webinar available. Uh, online, so you can uh, rewatch it, or maybe you you missed the part, or you want to share it with somebody. Uh, check out uh, our website, and you will uh, find a link where you can uh, download the video or, or watch it on YouTube. Uh, thanks a lot, and uh, I hope we will uh, see you on one of our next uh, webinars.